No, they're not. Okay guys, story time. So when I was 14 years old, I joined the gym for the first time. It was a really crappy one. It was like a community center in my neighborhood. I think it had like one squat rack, if you know that even. Either way, so I started training. And between 14 to 18, I probably put on about 15 pounds of weight. And um, I got bigger, I got better, but it's not that much to be honest. Like that's not that spectacular. I've talked about in the past how when you're doing noob gains, noob gains pretty much meaning that it's the first, you know, one year of legit training when you can put on crazy amounts of muscle, like really, really fast. We're talking 15, 20, 25 pounds of lean muscle mass. You get more gains in one year than you ever will pretty much for the rest of your life. So I didn't really get that and it kind of sucked. There's a few reasons behind this. And in college, I really started to figure this out and understand why that is. So I start to learn and I start to apply this and pretty much like four to five months, essentially the summer between first and second year, I started you know, applying this and then I came back in second year and people looked at me and they were like, holy crap, like what happened to you? You look like a different human being. You look like a different person because you got so much bigger. Now this could be very important to a lot of you guys out there who are hard gainers, people who can't really put on mass you know, that easily. It's very hard for you guys, essentially. Um, you are somewhat on the ectomorphic side. You're kind of like maybe taller, lankier, younger, whatever it may be. So there are two things I did to fix this problem and to, you know, gain weight very quickly. In fact, I went from like 155 to like 168 during high school, which is like four years. And then I went from like 168 to like 180 in a matter of like four to five months, pretty much retaining the same amount of lean um, in terms of body fat percentage. So I pretty much put on all this mass, which took me four to five months which is the same as what it took me like three to four years you know, previously. So it's crazy. The two things I did, number one, I started training properly. Instead of going to the gym and just doing bicep curls all day like I used to trying to like, you know, am I Arnold yet? Like what's going on? Um, I started training properly with a good training split, uh, focusing on compound lifts like bench squat, deadlift. You know, that being said, it's good. That was probably like 30 to 40% of my improvement. The other, you know, 60-ish percent of the reason for why I improved so much um, came from proper nutrition. And one of the things that I started doing is taking a mass gainer supplement. This is the first time I've ever done it. I you know, went to Walmart and I picked up the first one that I saw, which is probably a bad idea because it really, you know, I felt, um... <laughs> yeah, okay, so you know, that's all I'm gonna say about that. But um, I put on a lot of weight and it helped me get bigger, get stronger, get everything. However, I want to mention that it wasn't necessarily the mass gainer supplement specifically, which you know gave me that improvement. It's the newfound respect and approach towards nutrition, macros, calories, everything, um, which you know led me to going on that supplement because I realized that like I can't naturally get this much food by myself. I was too busy with school, you know, all these different things, and so I resorted to that. So it's this new approach I had towards nutrition as a whole which got me that way. But what I'm trying to show you is that it worked because mass gainer supplements are not bullshit. They're just like protein in the sense that they're food. They're pretty much like very fancy, refined, processed versions of food. That's why they have a nutrition label. That's why they have protein, calories, macros, fats. For example, whey protein is just a derivative, you know, um, a side product of the formation of cheese and like all these carbs, at least they should be, just versions of like refined and granulated like oats and buckwheat and barley, you know, whatever it may be. Pretty much just food that's been broken down into a supplement, powderized, dehydrated form for you guys to take. That's why I'm okay with, you know, especially food supplements. On the other hand, when you get the supplements which are kind of like weirder, like chemical compounds that, you know, they don't have a nutrition label because there is no calories or protein or nothing in them. It's like weird side products that your body can ingest and it's supposed to have some specific effect and there's like a receptor and it does this. Then it gets a little bit weird, but at the end of the day, there's nothing better than legit food. And the second best thing is food-based supplements like protein, mass gainers, or I guess rarely, not as common, carbohydrate supplements like you know, dextrose or something. That being said, I don't necessarily advocate a mass gainer supplement, at least not one of the commercial ones that you can just, you know, go to the store and buy like one of those like big 12 pound bags. What I actually do is I make my own mass gainer supplement. I'm gonna show you guys in this video just how to do it. Number one, start off, oh God, it's heavy. Start off with some protein because even though it is a mass gainer supplement and the majority of it is going to be carbohydrate based, I do advocate there to be a good foundation of protein. That way you don't have to go and take another, you know, like high intake of protein foods. You don't have to go and gorge on chicken breast. You want your mass gainer to be both a carbohydrate and a protein based supplement. So, you know, go get yourself. I use uh, my proteins impact way. This is double chocolate. Chocolate brownie is also pretty good, but yeah, I go for that. One of the biggest benefits about building your own mass gainer supplement is because unlike all of the commercial ones, which have whey, cre uh, uh, casein, all of these like dairy based 
um, things. You can get things like soy. You can get things like hemp. You can get things like brown rice, pea protein. You can make it vegan. And uh, not only is it vegan, but it's also non-dairy. So if you are vegan based on your personal choices, that's great. This is you know right for you. And in addition, if you just don't like dairy because you're lactose intolerant or because you may have issues with your skin, dairy can make you break out. As opposed to the regular masculine supplements, which are just loaded with dairy products. And this can make you, let's be honest, it's gonna make you fart, it's gonna make you break out, it's gonna make you, you might not feel that great. So this I think is a great option. Next up, carbohydrates. So in addition to water, which you're gonna need as your liquid base to actually make it you know, smooth and drinkable, I advocate like half a cup or maybe one cup of juice. Uh, just tastes great and uh, it makes it a lot sweeter. And you know, you're lean bulking or you're in the off season, you can go with a little bit more carbohydrates, you can go with a little bit more sugar. The real source of carbohydrates is going to be oats. This is what I advocate, make sure you cook these, do not take these raw. I take about 60, 80, maybe 100 grams of oats, cook them, you know, boil them, microwave them, whatever you wanna do, and then I stick it in there, blend it up. It might come out a little like thick, depending on how many oats you use, but it's still, it's, it'll be like a smoothie. It's not gonna be like a legit, like drinkable beverage, but it'll be a nice, doable smoothie. And adding to that, fruit. Probably the best thing that you can put into these mass scanner shakes, in my opinion. A fantastic source of carbohydrates. They're healthy, they're loaded with micronutrients, vitamins, minerals. It's gonna taste great. And um, you know, you're gonna knock down like two to three servings of fruits and vegetables, which is great because a guy my size needs like eight to 10 servings of fruits and vegetables per day which is not that easy to get. So this makes it a little bit more simple. Uh, you can put a little bit of honey in there if you want it to be extra sweet and you know, just a little bit more, you know, carbohydrates. And um, the last thing which I advocate, which is kind of optional, you know, for some of you guys, you may want this, some of you guys, you may not, fat in the form of peanut butter. So if you guys are out there and you need a little bit more fat, maybe you just, you have a low fat diet naturally, you don't like high fatty foods, um, you need some fat in your diet, you know, it's good for you. So I advocate maybe one to two tablespoons of like, you know, some peanut butter. Another option, which is kind of weird, but I've seen people do this, is one to two tablespoons of olive oil. It kind of sounds gross, and some of you guys may out there, you know, you may be cringing, but it mixes up, you don't even taste it, There's, you can't even tell that it's in there. And it's a good way of getting some very quick, very easy fats. But again, I mean, how many people out there actually have such a problem, so, so much difficulty getting fats in their diet? You can also use some avocados, except it's gonna taste make it taste a little bit weird. So I say just go with one to two tablespoons of peanut butter if you want. Okay, that's great. But let's say that you don't wanna go through this whole process. You don't wanna have to make this shake every day. And um, this is very good because it gives you a good amount of carbohydrates, but it's not a crazy amount of carbohydrates. So if you're like me and you're lean bulking on three to 400 calorie surplus, this is perfect. However, if you're a legit hard gainer and you need like seven, eight, 900 calorie, a thousand calorie surplus on top of your maintenance, this might not be enough unless you wanna have like 200 grams of oats, which that's not gonna taste very good. So you probably wanna go with a standard, you know, commercial um, mass or whatever you wanna call it, weight gainer supplement. But choosing the best one is, you know, sometimes it can be a little you know, complicated or controversial. So what I've done is I'm gonna throw up on the screen. I took some of the most popular supplement companies out there. I took their like their number one most popular um, weight gainer, mass gainer supplement from each company. And then I like took all the analytics, the carbs, the macros, the, the dollar values, you know, the price, and I threw it all in here. And that way you guys can tell exactly, you know, based on this, which one is right for you. But to give you a little bit of clarification, I always advocate going for something which is, you know, relatively high in calories because it is a mass gainer. So obviously, you know, you need some calories. I advocate going for something very high in protein because like I said, you want this to be a mass gainer, but it should be pretty much a protein supplement with additional carbohydrates thrown in. If there's low protein, you're gonna have to go get it from external sources. You're gonna have to take an additional protein supplement. You're gonna have to eat chicken all day. We do not want that. You want there to be a good amount of um, carbohydrates. You want there to be minimized intake of fat. Sugar is another thing because if we're getting a lot of carbohydrates, but a lot of those carbohydrates are coming from, you know, crappy, basic, simple sugars, then it may not be the best for you in terms of performance, in terms of overall health. So you wanna minimize your sugar intake. Luckily, all of these are pretty low, under 10 grams of sugar, you know, single digits. And the last thing you have to look at is the actual price that you're paying. In this case, I just went to bodybuild.com, looked at the actual dollars per 100 grams of whatever powder you are looking at. This is no tax, um, no shipping and handling. This is the you know, basic uniform um, you know, prices across the board for all these supplements. Ideally, you want one which is good in terms of its macronutrients, high protein, you know, decent amount of carbohydrates, low sugar, low fat, and at the same time, one which is you know, at a reasonable price. And in my opinion, I really do advocate my protein. Now, for full clarification, full disclosure, they do sponsor me. So you know, there is obviously some level of personal bias, but at the same time, it's kind of the chicken or the egg you know, paradox or phenomenon. It's like, which one came first? 
you know, am I only saying that they're good because they sponsor me? Or did I originally go and decide to work with this company because I've seen their products and I think that it's good? So it's kind of like, you know, which one came first? I think it's obviously option B because I would not have worked with the company unless I could, you know, comfortably stand behind their products such as in the case here, and also they're pretty damn cheap. In fact, if you use my discount code VIT20 for the USA website or VIT10 for the UK website, this product actually becomes the cheapest in this entire lineup. And if you guys are interested, I will leave some links down in the description box below along with the discount codes I mentioned. Um, but again, whatever works for you guys, I'm not gonna sit here and tell you take this because some guy on YouTube told you to and you guys are like sheep or like robots and you do exactly as I tell you, no. Use the methods that I've described in this video, either make your own masking or supplement with you know just some whey protein, or if you do decide to buy one, look at the graph that I made, sorry, the chart, and um, see the metrics, the quantitative you know analysis that I'm doing, and apply that yourself to a supplement of your choosing and see, is it worth buying? Is it worth buying more than the other one? You know, choose for yourself. I'm not here to tell you what to think, I'm just here to tell you how to think. Either way guys, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope it was a quick little informative video because a lot of you guys have been asking me questions about this, so hopefully we can put this topic to rest. I appreciate each and every one of you guys, and I'll see you in the next video. you know, gave me that improvement. It's the newfound respect and approach towards nutrition, macros, calories, everything, um, which, you know, led me to going on that supplement because I realized that like, I can't naturally get this much food by myself. I was too busy with school, you know, all these different things. And so I resorted to that. So it's this new approach I had towards nutrition as a whole, which got me that way. But what I'm trying to show you is that it worked because masculine supplements are not bullshit. They're just like protein in the sense that they're food. They're pretty much like very fancy, refined, processed versions of food. That's why they have a nutrition label. That's why they have protein, calories, macros, fats. For example, whey protein is just a derivative, you know, um, a side product of the formation of cheese. And like all these carbs, at least they should be, just versions of like refined and granulated like oats and buckwheat and barley, you know, whatever it may be. Pretty much just food that's been broken down into a side that is. So I start to learn and I start to apply this and pretty much like, four to five months, essentially the summer between first and second year, I started you know, applying this and then I came back in second year and people looked at me and they were like, holy crap, Like, what happened to you? You look like a different human being, you look like a different person because you got so much bigger. Now this can be very important to a lot of you guys out there who are hard gainers, people who can't really put on mass you know, that easily. It's very hard for you guys, essentially. Um, you are somewhat on the ectomorphic side, you're kind of like maybe taller, lanky, or younger, whatever it may be. So there are two things I did to fix this problem and to, you know, gain weight very quickly. In fact, I went from like 155 to like 168 during high school, which is like four years. And then I went from like 168 to like 180 in a matter of like four to five months, pretty much retaining the same amount of lean um, in terms of body fat percentage. So I pretty much put on all this mass, which took me four to five months which is the same as what it took me like three to four years you know, previously, so it's crazy. The two things I did, number one, I started training properly. Instead of going to the gym and just doing bicep curls all day like I used to, trying to like, you know, am I Arnold yet? Like what's going on? Um, I started training properly with a good training split, uh, focusing on compound lifts like bench squat, deadlift. You know, that being said, it's good. That was probably like 30 to 40% of my improvement. The other, you know, 60-ish percent of the reason for why I improved so much um, came from proper nutrition. And one of the things that I started doing is taking a mass gainer supplement. This is the first time I've ever done it. I you know, went to Walmart and I picked up the first one that I saw, which is probably a bad idea because it really, you know, I felt, um... <laughs> yeah, okay, so you know, that's all I'm gonna say about that. But um, I put on a lot of weight and it helped me get bigger, get stronger, get everything. However, I want to mention that it wasn't necessarily the mass gainer supplement specifically, which supplement powderized dehydrated form, for you guys to take. That's why I'm okay with, you know, especially food supplements. On the other hand, when you get the supplements which are kind of like weirder, like chemical compounds that, you know, they don't have a nutrition label because there is no calories or protein or nothing in them. It's like weird side products that your body can ingest and it's supposed to have some specific effect and there's like a receptor and it does this. Then it gets a little bit weird, but at the end of the day, there's nothing better than legit food. And the second best thing is food-based supplements like protein, mass gainers, or I guess rarely, not as common, carbohydrate supplements like you know, dextrose or something. That being said, I don't necessarily advocate a mass gainer supplement, at least not one of the commercial ones that you can just, you know, go to the store and buy like one of those like big 12 pound bags. 
What I actually do is I make my own mass gainer supplement. I'm gonna show you guys in this video just how to do it. Number one, start off. Oh. No, they're not. Okay guys, story time. So when I was 14 years old, I joined the gym for the first time. It was a really crappy one. It was like a community center in my neighborhood. I think it had like one squat rack, if you know that even. Either way, so I started training. And between 14 to 18, I probably put on about 15 pounds of weight. And um, I got bigger, I got better, but it's not that much to be honest. Like that's not that spectacular. I've talked about in the past how when you're doing noob gains, noob gains pretty much meaning that it's the first, you know, one year of legit training when you can put on crazy amounts of muscle, like really, really fast. We're talking 15, 20, 25 pounds of lean muscle mass. You get more gains in one year than you ever will pretty much for the rest of your life. So I didn't really get that and it kind of sucked. There's a few reasons behind this. And in college, I really started to figure this out and understand why.